Hi, I'm David LeClaire. I'm here at Wine World, which is our brand new wine superstore here in Seattle. So we've been open a whopping 54 days and counting. So uh, we have over 8,000 different SKUs on the shelves right now, wine from all over the world. So the way the store is kind of split up is the whole first half of our store is Washington and Northwest Wines, which is the largest selection of Northwest Wines on a retail setting in the world that we know of. And then behind the bar, or the, the counters are uh, the rest of the world. So we have one long row of Italy, one long row, wrong row, long row of Spain, that kind of deal. So for the most part, real easy to navigate the store. Big, long, wide aisles. People come in with flatbed carts and shop for private parties, or they just come in and you know buy something for their spaghetti dinner that night. So try and, to make it easy. And tell me about the event space. Uh, the event space is uh, almost 4,000 square foot of event space with uh, ceiling to floor windows. kind of looks out over Mount Rainier and the city and the lake and uh, faces south so you get the sunsets. And it's a beautiful spot that you can do private parties of 10 to 15 people or all the way up to 175 people. So we do quite a, quite a different uh, array of things from corporate parties to birthday parties to winemaker release parties. Seems like it would be a bit of a, a risk to open a wine shop at kind of the tail end of this economy, but you've had a great start. Yeah. Tell us about it. Well, to me, the, what's really important is that you have something for everybody. So I've had people say, well, what's your niche? And the niche is really something for everybody rather than we're just going after the high-end buyer or we're going after Trader Joe buyer. So people who shop at Trader Joe's, they come in and they find the same kind of value wines as, as they would find at Trader Joe's, but at the same time, there's the, the high-end affluent customers' wines as well. If you look at each aisle, like this aisle right here, this is all, in the middle of each aisle is a stack of wine that's affordable from the region that it's next to. So on the shelf, there's the high-end wine, and in the stack, there's all the affordable wine. So rather than having the bargain bin that's off in the back or in the basement or kind of off to the side, for the most part, every region that you're in, there's going to be a huge selection of affordable wines as well as you know, the premier wines that are going to be there. So that way people don't feel like they're being cheap looking for you know, wines that are $15 or under. It's very plentiful all the way through the store and really easy to find based on the region that they're interested in. You've had uh, great uh, success so far with local winemakers taking part. Tell us about how that works. Right. Well, we have uh, two, two uh, customer service counters right in the middle of the store, and they're basically set up to have complimentary tastings. So we can do up to five winemakers per side per evening. So it's basically we could do up to 10 winemakers. So on weekends, we'll, we'll expand it out, but usually during the night, uh, during the week, we do from six to eight every night, uh, one, two, or three winemakers that are pouring. Most of them are local because they're here, it's easy for them to drop by. But we had the Spanish Trade Commission in last week. We've got a, uh, Italians coming in on, on Saturday from all small vineyard wineries. So we have quite an uh, interest in international wineries coming as well, but it's dominated mostly by local wineries because of the access. Can you drop a few names of uh, famous regional winemakers have been in? Well, you know, I think that pretty much the bulk of, bulk of the guys have been in here so far. Uh, I would say that Beauty, like some of my favorite ones, Beauty, Sincline, the little guys, and you know, FSD, Mark Ryan, uh, you know, these little wineries, they're not Leonetti, they're not Woodward Canyon, you know, they're not been they're the old school. I think a lot of the younger, more kind of hip, modern wineries are the ones that are popping in more often. Right, right. Uh, what was in this space before? Because this couldn't have been brand new for you. No, this was a uh, 23,000 square foot office max. So oh, okay. it was a very ugly white, looked like an old hospital in here. So we put in the simulated cork floors and put in kind of Tuscan warm colors and have you know, added some fabric and a nice event space with chandeliers. And so the whole idea is to kind of make it a cross between a warehouse and uh, an upscale kind of shopping experience. So you have some of the nice touches, but you also have a lot of affordable wine and wide open spaces. I'm a person who can get lost rather easily, but I came right here. Can you give some quick directions on, sure. on how to get here? Yeah, there's a 60-foot illuminated billboard on top of the building, so if you couldn't if you couldn't find it by the address, you'd probably find it visually. But we're in the corner of I-5 and 45th, which is the University Street exit right just north of downtown. So it used to be the University Hotel, uh, so a lot of people know this building because it's been here for a very long time, but it's right off the freeway. It's got free parking and it's very visible. So the idea was easy access, free parking, know where it is, can't miss it, 
eventually it'll be an icon in Seattle, kind of like the you know Rainier Brewery. People will know where it is. You've been in the uh, Washington wine scene, Seattle wine scene, for a long time. Give yeah. us your background. Yeah, I used to be the sommelier at the Painted Table restaurant, which was uh, back in the Alexis Hotel. And so 10 long, brutal years there. Uh, I escaped out of the restaurant industry, and then uh, for the last uh, 10 years, I've been doing wine events all over the country as well as locally. Uh, I had a company called Seattle Uncorked, and uh, it's just a big kind of a social networking wine related function uh, event club and we have over 10,000 members of that so those events are still going on all over the city uh, we don't really do them here it's really more about them getting out and meeting people and socializing and, and doing wine our next event coming up is the exotic wine festival which is at Teatro Cinzani so it's all the new kind of funky grape varietals like Carignan and Carmenere and Mavedra that are being produced locally hmm. What what uh, what's hot right now for you uh, as far as Northwest wineries? Uh, what what uh, are you most impressed with? Well, I think the, I think to me the hottest uh, kind of source of wine in, in Washington is the second label wines that are coming out as blends. So while the economy is still a little bit kind of you know unsure of where it's going to go, uh, people are real interested in these fifteen to twenty five dollar blends rather than the forty five to fifty five dollar kind of high end prestigious wines. We're still selling quite a bit of higher end wine for gifts and you know special occasions, but I think that these table wines like Three Legged Red from Dunham, that kind of a thing, are uh, flying off the shelf comparatively. And so the blends that have been out for a little while are expanding. And wineries keep coming to me. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa I got enough blends. We got so many blends already. So there's a lot of blends, but it's, that's what's hot. Yeah. People are interested in it. You seem like a guy who's never standing still. So what's next? This is it for a while. This has got me pretty busy. So we have 16 employees and a lot of square footage and a lot of events coming up and a lot of things that are happening. So for the most part, um, I'm just trying to get a rhythm and get it all, all right. together. Great. Well, David, thanks for your time. You're welcome. Thanks for coming down.